Hi, and welcome back to the second of the Halfway Serious guys in this long list of series that is updated in a consistent manner. <clears throat> the Handmaiden is my second favorite class to play in Vermintide 2. Sigma! Now there's two ways you can play Handmaiden. You can play the cringe crit handmaiden, which is sort of like a less powerful shade, but with more mobility. Or you can play the ultra based tank maiden, which is a hard to kill mobility tank with a decent amount of damage. As you can probably tell, I'm going to be talking about the tank handmaiden. But before we talk about this handmaiden build, we first need to talk about the greater class itself, tanks. Some people think they can outsmart me. Maybe. Maybe. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart me. Now tanks sort of deserve their own video by themselves, but YouTuber JTC5 has a really good video talking about the purpose of tanks, so I'm just gonna paraphrase that explanation. I'll leave a link in the description for the video. See, tanks are a fun class to play, but they don't really serve a purpose in later, higher level stages of the game. But, what if I told you there's a career that is not only a sturdy tank, but also a good damage dealer? No, not him. I'll be making a video about him later. Well, kind of a good damage dealer. We'll talk about that later in the video. <laughs> that is fun to play and rewarding for the team? Enter stage left, the handmaid. To explain why Handmaiden is a healthy balance between shade levels of and starts to tickle the metaphorical sweet spot of being as good as Battle Wizard, I first need to explain the build. So let's get into it. The Handmaiden's first passive is Dance of Seasons, which increases Karelian's dodge distance by 15%. This isn't too important right now, but it comes up later in the build. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Handmaiden's second passive is Renewal, an aura that increases stamina regen by 100%. And holy mother of balls, this might be the most useful aura in the game. This one passive can totally make or break any Vermintide game. The Handmaiden's third passive is Ariel's Venison, which grants you 15% extra revive speed and plus 20 health on revive, which roughly changes your revive from to on your feet, we are leaving. and Karelian's career skill, the extremely unique and keystone ability that makes or breaks every single career in Vermintide, that totally changes how every character feels and has a unique style and name to called dash. Krillian dashes forward through enemies for a short distance. That's it. That's the entire ability. Now while I enjoyed taking the piss out of this ability, it is actually extremely useful and one of the key points of the build. You can use dash to quickly revive allies, get out of tight areas, or in them if you know what I mean. Staring manically into his eyes, she shouted, F*** my chicken! Reposition for a quick range kill, or any percent elf carry speed run the game. For the level 5 talent, you can either take Spirit of Echo, or you can take Marital Blessing. I prefer Spirit of Echo because I'm not trying to kill enemies as the handmaiden, I'm just trying to drag my spear through the entire wave to get my white health. Now some of you may be asking yourself, how do I get white health when two of my three light attacks and my heavy attacks are single target? Well, my dear friends, allow me to enlighten you. See, your first heavy attack is a sweep that does a decent amount of damage, followed by two single target attacks that are, well, this is the best way I can describe them. But if you tap block immediately after your first heavy attack, and then follow it up with another heavy attack, it defaults to the first sweeping heavy attack again. Do this on repeat, and you become the wave clear. Guys, I don't care how tough you think you are, 
Nothing hits harder than life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, okay? And don't be pointing fingers saying, I'm not where I need to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. The hand main's level 10 talents are Azrai Alacrity, blocking attack or pushing gives the next two attacks 30% attack speed and 10% power, Oak Stance, which gives you a flat 5% crit chance, and Focus Spirit, which gives you 15% power when you don't take damage, which goes on a 10 second CD when you do take damage. I don't recommend taking the crit chance, because while crit chance is nice on weapons, it seems like a waste to have an entire talent just for 5%. Between these two, I preferred Azrai Alacrity, but you can also go Focus Spirit if you're feeling extra try hard for that run. For level 15, I chose to pick Mainstay. This might seem weird since the weapon you're going to be using is a one-handed weapon, but you need more help with than you do with wave clearing. For level 20, you want to take Wraith Walk, which is extremely important because it allows you to dodge through enemies, and that will allow you to come up clutch when everyone else dies and you need to survive long enough to alt and res it. For level 25, you want to take Birch Stance, which gives you 30% block cost reduction. This may seem overkill when you're also going to put block cost reduction on your spear and shield, but with this added, you can basically tank two Chaos Warrior overheads for 1-2 to two stamina shields. And for level 30, the most important talent, you want to take Gift of Ladria, which gives you 2 seconds of invisibility each time after you ult. For your melee weapon, you want to take the spear and shield with either block cost reduction or more stamina, attack speed, and swift slaying. For your ranged weapon, you want to take either the longbow or the javelin that comes with the new Sister of the Thorn career. And with the longbow, I take power versus armored and power versus monsters as well as conservative shooter. For the javi, I take power versus armored, crit power, and also conservative shooter. For your necklace, you're going to want to take health, more block cost reduction, or stamina, and the good old natty bond. For your charm, you're going to want to take power versus armored, power versus infantry, and decanter. And finally, for your trinket, you're going to want to take crit chance, the bog standard curse resist, and shrapnel. When you combine this invisibility with your career skill mobility, increased revive speed, the ability to dodge through enemies, your 60 to 90% block cost reduction, depending on how you spec, and the stamina of the spear and shield, as well as its powerful blocks, you become the clutch master, able to survive almost anything if you are good enough. That may sound a little over the top, but I am serious when I say that is what makes this career so fun to play, and what makes it one of my favorite careers in the game. People absolutely swoon over you when you save the run, even though a lot of the time all you do is just hold block and spam dodge <laughs> until you buy enough time to ult and revive them with the invisibility. Okay, but not every career is perfect, and the handmaiden is no different. The biggest downfall of the career was alluded to earlier in the video, boss damage. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? Your spear and shield does pretty good damage to elites, usually able to 1-2 to two shot storm vermin, but it has really bad boss damage, especially since you only have a small amount of crit chance. Your bow, which actually does have decent boss damage, is held back by its limited oh, ammo. This isn't a problem with the javelin though, which is why I actually recommend you okay. take it so over the bow. Right the other drawback of the handmaiden isn't really in her stats, but how she feels to play. For some people, what may be the worst part about the dash lady is that she shines the brightest in the dark. What I mean by that is that she is at her best, or more specifically her flashiest, when you're the last man standing. You're the last one. Complete the mission. This is because people don't really notice you keeping everyone safe with your wave clear and your big shield, or reviving them within 0.2 seconds of them going down throughout the match. And that's the handmaiden. 
fun to play if you enjoy the spotlight, but usually only when everyone is already dead. Like I said, it's a bit of a cross between damage and utility, so it often goes forgotten like the middle child of the elf careers that it is. Still, I would recommend picking it up if you enjoy tense gameplay and kind of enjoy the suffering of others. After all, you can sort of intentionally sabotage the game to make yourself look good if you really wanted.